This is episode 187 of the Gold Squadron podcast, the last podcast of 2020. To that's crazy town, all right? We're, we are there, we're on the cusp. I'm your host, Dio Morales, and today I'm joined by Marcel. Next year's hindsight will be 2020. It's guaranteed the whole year. Will, hindsight is so last year. Haywood. I put mine in first. Why are you copying me? <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan, I can stand. Stan Azuski. I can fight. That's and right. And I can disappear into the clouds. This is true. Watch. <laughs> For those wa- <laughs> For those only listening at home, Ryan literally walked backwards until he was not able to be seen. So, so that's that's fun. Um, announcements. Mm-hmm. If you are not aware, if you didn't see the announcement that I put out on Twitter, Discord, Instagram, Facebook, all the places, it is official. The Gold Squadron Podcast Flight Club Championships are now ready tickets are on sale ready to go get them now here is your super super quick synopsis on how it works all right basically to for for the cost for the champions like one championship event that you'll qualify for and a qualifier all in $35 you get track shipping for all your packages everything is here Look it over, goldsquadronpodcast.com. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, how things shake out. Uh, we spent a lot of time getting things just squared away so that the organizational side is even more organized than Galaxies. My goal is to get all the shipping stuff out in two weeks flat. And I think with all the systems I set up, it's going to be possible as soon as we get to the end of the three championship events. Three championship events. Yes, everybody who plays qualifies for a championship. Check it out. GoldSquadronPodcast.com um, I mean, this uh, this episode today I think is a really special one, guys. It's a really special one. Because we're going to be talking about X-Wing and 2020 and how those two things interact. Um, you know what? What were the ups? What were the downs? We are we created a timeline uh, just to, just to use it as a way to talk about some of the good and some of the bad that happened. Um, but I can guarantee you one absolutely amazing thing that happened this year. I think one of the highlights, at least top ten, okay, at least top ten, and that is the fact that we're sponsored by Manscaped.com. Okay, like I think that's pretty fantastic, at least in the top number of them, maybe the top 20%, some would say, that you would get at manscaped.com by using the code GSP. Remember, it's Mrs. GSP approved. All right, now that that memory is... uh, (laughs) It is done with. Let's go ahead and uh, and let's let's jump into it now. Before we actually start talking about the timeline, I would like to hear from the you guys in the chat. Okay, let's let's keep this conversation going because I think today more than usual is going to be an opportunity for us to what's the word um, cathartic. It's going to be a cathartic day. We're, we're I really want us to really get into it. Uh, we're going to be talking about. The things that people are are emotion about, uh, emotional about, and uh, uh, some harsh realities, some things that uh, were out of our hands, but something that I think it's important for us to to address in our history as a game because I think uh, it's important. I think it's important. Now, what I want to start with is, uh, and any of you three can feel free to jump in here first. Is thinking about where you started, twenty twenty. And your relationship with X-Wing. Because, yes, I do consider it a relationship. X-Wing is almost like a lifestyle, okay? To be completely honest, right? It's like once, once you – it's very few people are just kind of in super-duper casually, but it becomes a part of your life. Um, do you think your – what we're going to call relationship with X-Wing is the same, stronger, or weaker than you were at the beginning of 2020. And you know what? I will even start. And I, I mean, I think it's probably really easy to say that it's at least 
a little bit weaker in the sense that the one thing we don't have is the anchor of the people that hold us to the game. And I know I might be just like stealing that off the table to start, but you know, it's it's a little it's a little bit tough out there. Guys. I think mm, I would actually say that um my relationship with X Wing as far as uh how much I've been consuming content and getting games in. Oh uh, and that had actually gone up during uh, 2020 um, without uh, a local game store uh, to get in kind of like random games near me. Um, it's pretty much just my dedicated group of friends. So with even just one or two of those guys, um, you know, not meeting up for games and things like that, significantly decreased my in-person play. Mm -hmm. So having uh, the option of um, going online, getting games on uh, has really opened it up uh, to meeting new people. That's very true. Marcel? Yeah, I think I'm there with you. Um, you know, last year we traveled so much from, you know, uh, just just overall going going to Poland. I know you took, took the other, you know, the whole world trip tour, mm -hmm. uh, having worlds and just doing so much traveling. And so, you know, this year... Maybe I, I, it's possible, like William, that I maybe played more this year than I did last year, uh, just because of how accessible it is. And it's been, I played in more tournaments because traveling is literally just getting out of bed. And uh, there, you know, I'm, I'm playing in London all of a sudden, just <laughs> like getting out of bed. Um, so, in that regard, I've had more games. And I've experimented with more lists that I probably wouldn't otherwise, but I'm I'm disconnected from the community, and I find myself like um, you know on Facebook and everything else. Really, like my the main people I talk to are people that I've met throughout you know the years um, all across the world. You know, in Europe, Australia, Singapore, wherever they are, South America. Those are the people that I you know, that I talk to more than anybody else. Uh, but it, but it's all online, so it doesn't really feel the same. Um, another thing that I'll say about how I feel about the game is that this year, I think, especially towards the second half of this year with The Mandalorian, I think the game has... The, the lore behind the game, the Star Wars lore behind the game, has been more for me than previous years. Pre previous years, it was just chess with funny looking pieces. Uh, it was just, you know, the, like the competitive nature. And, you know, this year, uh, it's, I started consuming towards the second half, like more of the content, figuring out more of the lore, trying to figure out like who, who is the Thrawn person that everybody keeps talking about, et, et, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and just going down different rabbit holes. Um, so that side of it also, I'm a li I feel a little bit more connected with the Star Wars lore behind the game. Uh, when I see the ship, like I can, I can add more lore context behind it. Mm -hmm. So that's also, I, I think, kind of helped keep me interested when some of the people elements are out of it. And now and I'll say one more thing. I know I'm kind of hugging it up. No, it's all right. I, that's, I this is what the, today's for, the, man. Yeah, I think the worst part of all of it is that while I'm connecting a lot with people all around the country and the world and we're playing that, I miss playing with with uh, with Brandon, with Jeremy, with James, John. You know, I, I miss playing with the guys. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, miss, I miss playing at Pastimes. I miss playing at Fair Games. Um, so I, I miss the local community because the local community – in Chicago isn't as involved in the online play as some of the other communities. So that's, I think that's what I miss most of all is just, just, just hanging out with, with the friends on Wednesday nights. Ryan. It's, it's a little bit of both. Um, I get and understand and have similar feelings to what Will and Marcel mentioned. There's very few times you have the opportunity to play against some of these people that you now 
are have more online opportunities and organized events. Thank you, Dion, and many others who have amped up their online uh, presence to host events. And they're much more uh, populated and filled with people across the world. And everyone's really cool about like scheduling times. I thought some of these events may have some difficulties depending on uh, the players and different time zones. And I've never had a problem realistically. Everyone's been very cool and chill about it. Everyone just wants to have fun and play games and kind of escape what was 2020 most of the time. Uh, but I can't disregard the fact that, yeah, I probably have had a little bit of a downturn in my X-Wing play. Um, not really overall an interest, just I've had other things I've either needed to do, wanted to try, squadrons, for example, wanted to, uh, uh, you know, anything across the board. Uh, it was either more time to try new things because X-Wing wasn't as focused because I I keep my focus on uh, the events in certain formats such as hyperspace um, light play and extended here and there. And when most of the events are extended, so I check out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, my mind's always looking for builds, trying to analyze the meta. So I never felt disconnected more, but there was still just a slight wane in interest because my interests kind of divided more this year. Yeah. Because there wasn't a focus on, there wasn't a deadline date very often where it was like, I got to practice and know this thing by this date and time. There were only a few events that I participated in online throughout the year that had a hard six-round day for that to attempt to play in. Um, but I definitely feel what Marcel's saying, too, as well. I miss being able to go to the local store, hang out with my, my buddies, my locals, who we all we, we all still talk online. Uh, we get Aces Highs games in here and there online. We sometimes get together and play online, but n not as often as, like, We'd be at our at our eternal games every Friday night or every night. I would normally help organize it, which I, I kind of prided myself on a little bit too, try and help build the community in my area and have provide a good representation for the game so that more people and new players want to come back, keep playing, get cool prizes. I try to structure prizes as evenly across the board as possible and promoting uh, some camaraderie along the way. So... Uh, that level of camaraderie, I definitely miss a lot. Yeah, I mean, for for myself to kind of I expound on on, I, I didn't want to take too much of the you know, other conversation points before you guys got in, but for myself, Marcel, you had mentioned, I, I think I, I probably would have said the same thing if I had not. If if the situation w was the same, but let, let's just, let's take a second to talk about 2019. 2019 was an amazing year for me personally, and for all the things that I was able to do in X Wing, like life changing experiences, uh, the world tour. In and of itself, to, to know that I was able to literally go around the planet and play in all these places and meet all these people, like I was on such a massive high. Um, and wh while I have, you know, as you guys know, I've never, I haven't stopped, you know, the the desire to to make you guys content and, and do all this stuff. But it's it's one of those where, for myself, it's like, man, I was. I would say every other weekend I was tra traveling somewhere and meeting brand new people and shaking hands and getting to see the face of our community, uh, which I found to be a very special, uh, a, a very, a, a special opportunity for, for me in the position that, uh, that I'm in. And that is what I, what I miss most right there. But on the on the flip side, I do think this what we're you know what what it's been nine, nine months of of lockdown, and who knows when we'll actually get to these formal large scale events again. But I think it has created some. I feel and chat. This is this is a a question for you guys. Like I feel that you guys have ha gotten more insight into me as like a person. And into us as a cast uh, of, of people because we've, we've been able to – we've spent more time with you guys casually 
than than we have in the past, which has been has been nice. And um, you know, it's this for me having Gold Squadron has given me something to do. Right? I mean, I love it. That's not just not just a chore, but like it's. It's given me something to put my energy into as well of as, of course, my, my teaching and things like that. So thank you guys uh, there. But yeah, it's it's been an, an interesting an interesting one. Uh, have there been positives? Oh, yeah. We're going to hit some more of those here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's it's been an interesting year. And feel free, guys. We we do have our eyes on the chat. Like, comment. Let's this today. Today is a day of of just getting some stuff off the chest. And sometimes we gotta sometimes we gotta talk about stuff. Yeah, um, a couple go for that, it. Uh, kind of noted. There's one guy right in the chat here who said they played their first and only real tournament at Eternal just before COVID hit. So I was happy that they're still in the game at this point, even though their first tournament was just before it happened and no more live tournaments and stuck around, you know, have interest in the game. And then I like uh, Nick Bond mentioning that uh, watching GSP throughout this year is like watching Ahsoka grow up through Clone Wars. I thought that was cool. Yep. And there's even been a couple of players talking about how they learned about the game in lockdown. Like that is something that blows my mind right that there are people who have been introduced to our community during this time where they've they've never actually played an on the table game or they haven't been to a a uh, a game store before but you know i think and this is maybe jumping the gun a little bit but i think i think we're kind of on this train already one of the things that has happened with 2020 is that it has I'm going to use the word legitimized, and I'm using that very deliberately. It has legitimized online play because there were a lot of players, a lot of players that would look at the online play and say, but that's not real X-Wing. And of course, it's not physical X-Wing, but with having been away from the tables competitively for so long, if you wanted to stay involved in the game, this is this is what you got for most people. Um, and I think that as we move forward and when every when things return to normal for more people, I think there will be less people that turn their nose down to players that play online because there there was this this strange disconnect between the two. And I think also there have been players who we've talked to on chat who have said like, Hey, I don't have a local game store. TTS vassal. That is my local game store. Like that is what they have. And, um, you know, and, and Nano Antonio, I, I appreciate your comment there in the chat. He's saying that GSP has played a major part of legitimizing online play. And I, I appreciate that. But I think it has legitimized itself because some some of the amazing players we had during online play, uh, sorry, uh, during in-person play, played online and showed that their skills translated to the computer. They were still making great choices. And uh, I think Timo Rabe is a perfect example of that. One, a 400, 400 per, plus person system open in person in February, I think it was, or January. We'll, we, we, we'll, we'll get the timeline in a second. And then also crushed face in Galaxies and Space Jam. Right? He has two, two, two championships uh, because of that. So, like... Yeah, I was going to point out once we get to the main board. I think it was definitely the year of Timo. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what? I think I think it's time. I think it's time. Let's go ahead. And I know it's not super pretty and presentable, but uh, we we can. For those of you watching online right now, we can actually get you guys a link to 
the uh, to the timeline, and you guys can can look it over yourself. And for those of you listening uh, to the old audio only, this will be the uh, the link in the description, so you guys can go ahead and take a look at it if uh, if you're not watching online with us. So uh, I'll start. We'll read it down. One, uh, we'll go through one these one at a time. Talk about them a little bit. See what you remember. See what you don't. By the way, I also included links to pertinent playlists or articles for uh, each of the items that I could find. So uh, January 24th is where we started off the Las Vegas Open, the very first premiere event in Las Vegas put on by Fly Better. We were there uh, casting, and if you missed it, guys, this was one of my favorite finals that I have ever casted, okay? Zach Bart versus Paul Olsen. In the finals, goes to final salvo, and Zach Bart wins on on the final salvo. Like it was, it was amazing, absolutely amazing, and uh, it just just a, a good time. Do you guys have? I mean, uh, do you guys have any memories from from the stream? Any any thoughts about the uh, Las Vegas Open? I'll just say that. Uh... Paul and Zach are both great individuals, both uh, as players and as just general people. Uh, couldn't have been a great, better final for that type of event. I didn't get a chance to go. Um, I'll f let anyone talk who's who did, but uh, man, that was an impressive final to watch. Yeah, I. that was the first tournament for me for the year. Um had a great time. I think I, I did. I did pretty mediocre. I think I went three and three, um, but had a great time there. Uh, had a great time losing my money on poker. <laughs> um, <laughs> turns out, don't go all in when uh, like I was up three hundred bucks. No, I was up two hundred bucks because I started with one. I was up to three, and then I went all in and lost all three in one hand. So don't do that, boys and girls. Um, but had a great time, great show. The Fly Butter guys, uh, Ryan and D, put on an amazing tournament. And I remember watching the game from the side. I got a feeling that it was probably better seeing it in, because um, you know it's it's kind of harder to see when you're looking over people's shoulder. Yeah. So I, I imagine that looking at it, seeing it on the screen and on stream was probably you got more into it, but. Great time. Yeah, I mean, LVO was <laughs> it was a trip. It was a really fun stream. I got to commentate with with a with a bunch of different people. Wade Pache uh, was there in person with us. It it was a great time. I will tell you, I still have cash in my wallet from Vegas that I won. I still have cash in my wallet. <laughs> that I won playing blackjack, uh, mostly because I don't ever spend cash. So it's it, it, and then of course COVID, right? So I've had no chances to go places and spend cash. But uh, like you have to spend that cash on the twenty fourth of this year. It'd be a whole year. A whole year. We're like, God, put it down. What are, What are you getting? Uh, groceries. Really boring. <laughs> but that's what. That's probably what it would be for. <laughs> oh man. Uh, then we hit January 31st. We got the card packs released, right? We had uh, Hot Shots and Aces, the Obstacles, and the Bombs pack. I think those were the three that got released. Am I right on that, guys? So here's my question to you guys. Out of all the pilots that got released in that card pack, who do you think was the most... Meta defining. Hmm. I don't remember who got released. I think probably ZZ. Yeah, it's got to be ZZ. ZZ was in like ninety percent of resistance lists throughout yeah. the year. Yeah, uh, that that's it. ZZ ZZ takes the cake for sure. Like with, without a shadow of a doubt. Um. Yeah. I mean, it, the, here we go. We can we can bring up the. Uh, the pictures of those. Okay, we got the hot shots and aces, the bombs, um, and those released uh, January 2020. There. Ah, was it the first time also that we got the uh, gas clouds? 
No, but it got the second set of gas clouds, the okay. larger ones. Yep. Oh, also, actually, this is true. Uh, fifth, the Inquisitors. Both the Inquisitors also came in there. Fifth brother, seventh sister. Came in those packs? No. It was just just fifth brother. Just fifth seven. brother. Okay. But uh, that that was my first thought, and then I realized ZZ was part of it because homing missile fifth brother is a thing. Mm-hmm. I was go. thinking Nam Lam, but yeah, Nam Lam is more of a fun ship, not a meta defining ship. But I mean, it's, I think Nam Lam, like, took the Jump Master for a little bit to be like, hey, it's a playable Jump Master. Because I think it is playable, right? At the time, it wasn't playable at all, it was too expensive at the time. I think the card packs when they came out also came out with the fact that the cannon slot was then released on the jump master at the same time, right, Marcel? Release, release the cannon. I like it. All right, now I will tell you when I was putting together this timeline, guys. When I realized that it was January thirty first of twenty twenty, that that was that soon. That the Thai BA and the Fireball were released? Like, that seems wrong in my brain. Something about that. Like, wait, that wasn't released this year? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you guys feel that way. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like they've been around forever, but... Um, yeah, I guess not. Because I remember that's around the time that Ryan was doing his... Uh, Ryan's Fireballs. Uh-huh. At the store championship. So, yeah, it was this year, but right before COVID. Remember, 2020 is like three years packed into one. So, it's okay to feel like it was a long time ago. It's true. It's true. And the, the last thing here for January, uh, we had the re-release of the RZ-1A wing, the Defender, the Interceptor, and the YV. But I think what was more notable and one thing that people were like, what about is the fact that FFG went back and said, but actually we're not going to re-release the Tie Reaper and Saul's Renegades. Like that caused a lot of waves in the community because there was a lot of 2.0 only players who never got a chance to get those. FFG was claiming there's a lot of stock of, of that other stuff around. Um I would say if you need a, a Saw's Renegade pack, there's a bunch of them at our local pastimes <laughs> sitting on the shelf right now. Uh, but yeah, and I think, was that also the time where they said that they weren't going to reprint the Imperial Raider? Is that the same time? Yeah, I think they seems, got seems all canceled right. together. Something like that. All righty. Then we jump into February. Take it, Ryan. Take February. So in February, we start off with the Sith Taker Open, uh, won by the world champion at the time, Ali Pocknell, using uh, what he, I feel like he became more famous for, uh, at least on the online scene. And when I talk to other players like Ryan Fleming, you doing the Fen Rao and three zealous recruits of scum, running those four fangs to great effectiveness. Do we have any video from Sith Taker? Was that I could not I could not find any in uh in my quick search uh, for that one. If anybody knows where those videos are, if they uh, if they were recorded, uh, hit a brother up. But I don't have them. Mm -hmm. And then the Texas System Open, Duncan Howard shows up with not an Imperial Ace list. Instead, flies a Separatist Swarm, the kind of mainstay eight ship one at the time, which was the two Hyena Bombers with Plasma Torpedoes and Landing Struts, three Vultures with Discords and Grappling Struts, and then three other Vultures with one of them having Grappling Struts. The other two could not. Too many points. That list does not fit anymore. It's 202 points now. And then that same like day... Maybe a little more than that. Now that I think about it. It's only two points up? It's got to be more. Well, it's got to be more than that because I think the... Well, the plasmas the, went down too. Plasmas went down, but the vultures each went up back because this is when the vultures were 
for 19 points and the grappling struts were one, making them 20 total. They're now 21 total with struts. I don't know. I put it. I, I copied the XWS into Yasby and it spit out 202. All right. Chat, let me know if I'm wrong. Feel, feel free to build it on your side. Let me know if I'm wrong. But that's that same day with what we were, we previewed a little bit earlier, we had the UK system open. Timo Rabe winning that uh, with Boba Fett and Kashka. The list is currently 189 points, uh, but. It doesn't have that doesn't include Maul, which you can't even put on Boba Fett anymore. So it actually would be one ninety nine for for reference there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. That's a, that was a massive event. That was again they broke the record for largest uh, in person X wing event four hundred and thirty six. I think was the number I saw on List Fortress. I'm not remembering I, off the top of my head. I think last year's UK got over five hundred. But I think it might have been the largest system open, maybe, because the UK Nationals last year, or the, I think, broke five. Uh, it was big. Is the, is it, the was, it was big, yeah. It was it big, was, 400. It, it okay. was, yeah. It was really, really great. 500 was the first system open. All right, well, it was it was pretty, pretty big. It was a big event. The biggest event of the year. We could say, we could say, we could say that. Probably um, the biggest event of second edition. Well, this is true. This is, this is very true. Uh, and then we wrap up February with the Barons team tournament in Gold Squadron history. That was our last in-person streamed event. Uh, I honestly could not find who won in my in my when I was putting this together uh, off the top of my head. But it was a great put it, uh, event put on by the Birmingham Barons, uh, a team championship. You guys can watch the playlist. We streamed five rounds there i got to stay at andrew knuckles i've got to stay at the curl paw creative studios which is really really cool um and then then we head into march take it marcel so march it says uh dion dion tries to win a store championship um who knocked you out of that one uh omar was it by one? Oh yeah, it was point. Omar. Yeah, Omar by uh, one point. I recorded. Yeah, I thought, I yeah. thought it was Kayla, but no, Kayla knocked Omar out. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> Fun times. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Um, then we've got uh, March 9th, the Gamma twenty twenty. I don't know what this is. So, so. Uh, Will, you know what that is? Go for it. Uh, it's a gaming convention. Or game developing convention. That's all I really know. Yeah. So um, at Gamma 2020, there was a sit down interview uh, with Steve Horvath, who at the time was uh, forgetting his position off the top of my head. He's a big, big wig. At, at Asmodee, and they had talked about that the Star Wars line was approved through 2023 and that some changes were going to be happening. We talked about this in our, I think it was episode one, in, in the 170s somewhere, we were talking about the switch over from uh, FFG to AMG. Uh, and we referred back to this interview. It was really, it was really interesting. Um, really interesting talk that Team Covenant had with, with Steve and, you know, I, some of my, some of the line of questioning that I have in my mind comes back to to this because this literally, if you look at what's right next to it, March 17th, all the shutdowns begin. That that is the weekend that Crate Cup gets canceled. Adepticon gets canceled. Uh, there was another event that got canceled that same weekend. I mean, th this is essentially where. The, where, where the U.S. and a lot of other countries drew the line in the sand and said, "All right, we got We got to shut stuff down." So, so this is, uh, but yeah, this is where uh, where where we were. Um, yeah, I know Crate Cup was so close to. Ha I mean, I think it was like the day before Crate Cup is where uh, Chris Allen ends up calling it, and then right after that, the um, um, sorry, one second. Yeah, it was because uh, I know some people that are actually already flown out to Crate Cup before he officially called it, and they kind of 
the few of them that did make it hung out together for a little bit, but it was literally while like a day after it was like country shut down, like official like travel and everything. And some of the people who were in North Carolina were kind of concerned how they would make it back home. Yeah, because uh, air- airports were shutting down um, and and all that. And, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, 007 Nick Bond, uh, reminding us also in early – I'm not sure the exact month uh, or the or the date, but in early 2020, we also lost um, uh, Vince Kingston, uh, one of the really well-known judges for X-Wing uh, living in the – in the uh, in, in Europe. And while we didn't uh, – it was – there you go. Thank you. The 20th of February, 2020. Um you know he he passed we got to meet him one time uh, marcel and i specifically uh when we were over there in europe and uh the guy knew how we like his tip his uh his, his ship uh sailed that's all that's all we knew <laughs> for the first day uh but um you know he meant a lot obviously to the uh the european players because he was he was their guy right he was the one who who ran a lot of the european events so um while we didn't have necessarily an attachment to him uh you know we get it so yeah you know we're gonna go ahead and uh and and put him put him on our on our on our list here i'll be honest i i did i was just looking at events and this is you know this is uh just something to to add on on there i'll go ahead and put that in And just as a reminder, I'm going to put it. I'm doing it live. And, um, and, th- and then we get into, uh, into March 28th. We had our first online event. And it was, it was the, the experiment. It was between all four of us. We had the GSP showdown. And our champion was William Hagwood. A rich, Where's the belt? I need to. I know. I, I never heard it. We need to see both belts today. This is the year in review. Show the belts. Uh, I never I got think, that belt. We need that belt. I, think, <laughs> Wait, I what? take back my two. I had to take back my two belts name because I didn't get no belt for them. That's all right. Call the, got call the belt space jams. So this was. I know. Well, you know. I, I like I I enjoyed this a lot. Um, yeah, and I think we need to do it again. We need to find a way to do this again because I enjoyed just doing round robin with you guys a lot. Yeah, the the, the picking of battles and everything that was fun. I mean, I think we could probably make it a yearly thing. We could make it a yearly thing. Um, I'll actually get the belt made for the champion. I'll get Will something special since I forgot. To, I, it was one of those things where, like, as the shutdown happens, like, all right, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do this, and it just got swept under the rug with everything else. Uh, no worries. Shame, man. shame. <laughs> oh, I remember, Dion was a part of so many close matches, <laughs> right? I think it was like so all of them <laughs> on the cusp every all night, t- every time. So originally, for anybody who doesn't remember, originally what we were going to do is we were going to meet up in person, the four of us, and like, oh, hey, you know, we'll meet up in person and do this round robin thing. And then the seriousness of the situation increased, right? It's one of those where the reality is at the time we didn't realize how serious this was going to end up being. And then the seriousness level just kept going up. And then we decided let's just do this online. And it was it was our first like full fledged foray into like all right let's this was our putting putting the platform to the test and laying the foundation for everything else that we did later in the year for online events so that was pretty awesome uh will take april all right for april 1st uh that it or april 1st uh jokes on you that- it's actually the april 4th uh <laughs> that's the jank tank open uh, which was a charity event, oh man, uh, that had players uh, using random lists. Uh, Dion, I know you helped uh, scan some of those lists. Almost to make sure all that... of them. Almost all of them. <laughs> oh, I was all of them. Were hand hand selected to not be too good. Uh, the particularly kind of bad uh, people are looking for. Anyways, 
Uh, I'm going to slaughter this name, but Agata Peluskia? I, I, no, yeah, I can't do it. Uh, Pikulska. Pikulska is what I would say. Pikulska. Yeah. yeah. Close. I, I recall Farmer having to say Agata. I think. Agata. Like when he was corrected, that when he tried to pronounce it the first time, which is normally wrong. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. They had one with, I believe, uh, oh man, it was either odd, it was Oddball versus Gans Feinsman. I think the Gans Feinsman uh, pulled it out at the end. Um, I may be wrong on that. Uh, I do know that uh, they had won it, donated uh, the charity money to their charity of choice. It ended up being a fantastic event. Yeah, so what we did is uh, Fly Better and ourselves, uh, we said we would put up a dollar for every person who played in the event, and then um, whoever the winner was, we would basically what Fly Better would donate to one, and we would donate to the other to basically d do that. And it was it was around five hundred dollars. Uh, is what we ended mm -hmm. up doing. We ended up doing a, a couple of some extra money just because there was some different like challenges and stuff that what was uh, was done. So that was really really fun and uh, something that we did early on. It was a single elimination tournament for anybody who didn't remember. So there was like you know five five twelve was like the first bracket, and then it, it every mm -hmm. round you were if you lost you were eliminated. So that was uh, that was really really great. Uh, yeah, I got. Uh, I think two wins. I think I got my, uh, kicked out of the third one by what I thought was a real list. <laughs> my jank, my jank was no longer janky enough. <laughs> um, anyways, let's move on to April 10th. Uh, that's the Kyber Cup, uh, and Tharlan had won it. Uh, that's flying his Empire list. It was uh, Whisper, Darth Vader, and Duchess. In their little triple ace, uh, Cover Cup um, was, uh, or well, is, uh, Hexiled's uh, normal league that they have going on, Hexiled Gaming. Uh, Tharlan being the winner that uh, time. I think that was, they've been actually doing that for a bit. That was, I think, season four or five. I forget now. Yeah, not sure. And for anybody who's wondering, uh, the events that I put, I know a lot of people did uh, smaller events. Basically, what I was looking for was documented events with around 90 players is what I put on this list, just for, for kind of reference. If you don't, if you ran an event, uh, don't be offended if we don't talk about it. It's That that was the, the threshold that I put. I think our lowest number event, there was 88 people who participated in that, uh, just kind of for, for reference. Sorry, keep going, Will. Which, well, um, side note really quick, uh, Kyber Cup is, next thing is available to sign up now. Sign-ups are done soon. They're almost up to, like, 170 people. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. that's yep, big... they had to extend uh, the camp. It is a free, uh, like, league style where you play, like, once a week. Um, and they has prizes donated. And it has been very successful. Um, they're doing a great job over there. So let's move on to April 17th. That's the Sith Taker Cup that was won by Tom Reed running a Boba Kashka build. Uh, once uh, Again, noting that Boba can't run that mall anymore. Uh, it seems to be a running trend. And maybe in our analysis that every single one of these Bobas will have mall on it. So no surprise that that's not a thing anymore. Um, but Tom Reed uh, get, takes that one by them. April 25th. This is the big show now. This, the first of the Space Jam events. Showdown held strong. Uh, so he opened it up to the public. Uh, and uh, to, I thought, a uh, great success at the time. Uh, me and Ryan battled our way into the finals. Man, do I'm very... Rigged. GSP so rigged, rigged. rigged. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, we're Peered gonna go through all. Top. Yeah, we're we're gonna go through all the effort of making making a fake 
online event to look as <laughs> look as real as possible. But really, it was just collusion the entire time. Sorry, everybody who was not part of that ruse. <laughs> Anyways, I was not uh, part of that ruse, Rig. <laughs> nope. You didn't have the beard. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> Anyways, I I had I got the win over Ryan, uh, and a game that ended up snowballing um, in my favor. Uh, it was pretty risky, or I don't know it's risky. I, I would say. Uh, well, uh, not back and forth, but it could have gone either way um, for a long time. But just a tipping point of what was it? Grand of Grand Nattying three against Finn. Man, I think that was Whisper Nattying uh, from Finn because Whisper got caught in that little scrum. But they both I, got caught. <laughs> All three of my yeah, got caught. Point, one and turn they, after another, they got caught, just got out of it. Uh, no but that, that, that event was the birth of Finn Inevitable. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, I ended up taking it with uh, the World Championship uh, ships. I guess my list was different. Because I was running Fire Control System Beta, Grand, and Whisper. Um, so a slight variation on the World Championship list. Which, man, uh, I will say, not, I hadn't been an ace player up until that point. But solidified my year as being aces heavy. And now that list is sitting at 203 points. Yeah, no. By the way, I think all this year, my uh, list at Space Jam Chicago, I don't recall seeing another It's the Resistance list used and placed high anywhere throughout the year. So I think I can claim myself as the resistance player of 2020. Oh, he's taking the mantle. He's Ryan. I am I the resistance, Stanizuski. I <laughs> am the resistance. I don't care about all you Ray double A's or five A people. Four A's. Played, thank you very much. I, I played the it's the resistance card. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely awesome. All righty. And then we got into May. We had Space Jam Rome. Uh, one again, another a name that you're going to hear us say more than once, Timo Rabe winning it with Scum. Uh, Boba Fett again, but now Boba Fett with Dengar. Uh, the list is currently 190 points, but again, Maul was on there, so that's why it says 190 instead of 200. Um I tried to, in our document, note what the current point cost is because, as we know, with points changing, you may be interested, like, oh, I want to try that list by that player, but, you know, things might not necessarily be legal. Um, on the, the upgrades on there, we had, for Boba Fett, Fearless, Jamming Beam, Maul, now illegal, Proton Bombs, Contraband Cybernetics, Hole Upgrade, and Slave 1 title. Then on Dengar, we had Marksmanship, Proton Torpedoes, Auto Blasters, L337 Crew, Han Solo Gunner, and Contraband Cybernetics. Uh, won that event and took home one of the Space Jam belts. Then we had Space Jam Los Angeles, uh, won by Rodrigo Denigal, uh, Denigal, excuse me, with Separatists. We had a Separatist Swarm here. He was rocking. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize that was going to do that. Sorry about that, everybody. Got it. Uh, a techno, let's see, this is uh, two techno union bombers with plasma torpedoes. Uh, three of them, uh, three Trade Federation drones with grappling struts and discord missiles. Uh, a couple more Trade Federation drones with, uh, or sorry, three more with just the grappling struts. Very similar to what Duncan Howard was playing in, uh, in Texas. I think the variation was... Uh, was was a little bit different. And Just different uh, placement on struts. The hyenas didn't have struts, whereas Duncan preferred that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So less flexibility on uh on those bombers. And that list is now currently at two hundred and two points with some of the points going going up and down on there. Then we get into June, Marcel. Uh, <laughs> had the wrong window up. Sorry. I was doing things. Uh, June, we've got Space Jam Sydney. And 
I'm just going to read it off the other one because this is very fuzzy on, on your screen. Okay. So we've got uh, Space Jam Sydney with, well, I'm not going to say this one, with an Empire pilot. And he has a 202 point list of, um, it's a, oh God, Admiral Sloan. Uh, so you can tell how much I like Admiral Sloan. So the, is this really, is this the first time that Admiral Sloan started really showing up a lot? Or I think he had shown up before, right? Like done some top fours and stuff like that. There might have been a couple top fours in, like, I think the archetype yeah. was Reaper Sloan, like the base Reaper, with two interceptors and four fighters. But they might have been around the same time, too. Yeah, because I know that the first version of Sloan was a lot of um, uh, Rack. It was Rack with TIE Fighters or something like that. No, when I, uh, uh, in that first Space Jam, uh, the, one of the top four placers was this list. The the four TIE Fighters in Rack. Mm-hmm. Then we got uh, the new faction damage decks released. Uh, has anybody bought those? I'm, I'm talking about from us four. Uh, I want to, but I've been having problems finding the ones I actually want. They're the big ones, right? They're like the regular mm -hmm. yep. uh, ship pilot. Yeah, I bought the separatist ones. No surprise there. Uh, the weird part for me is that, like, because they're standard sized cards, they look great. They're very nice, well printed, big cards. But the, because they're big, they don't work with my storage. Like what I would yeah. take around different mats when I play when I would play in person games. I like the small deck. Yeah, no, it, I'm glad. I'm I'm lucky. I have a one that fits the damage deck well. Because um, I'm using the the damage deck, the big one that came with like the the bonus when you bought the original core set or something like that when you yeah. pre-ordered. Um, and then in July 28th, we got the point adjustment. Uh, also known as, um, the happening, <laughs> the, uh, what's another way to frame it? So July 28th is the day that the Geonosis Empire, uh, rises. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the day I'm, I'm trying to think of something. What was the day? Uh, it's the apocalypse. The of. I'm trying to think um, like, in, uh, like what day it was that had the locust swarm come on the biblical level, right? <laughs> That's like, what I'm thinking too. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Um, but yeah, July 28th was a sad, sad day for everyone not named. Uh, uh, God, I can't think of his name now. He won. Let me, let me scroll down. He won like a million stuff. Fawn Langalan. Yeah, Fawn Langalan. Yeah. yeah. It was a great day for Fawn. It was a terrible day for. For the resistance, for the Republic, for the Empire, for the First Order, for anybody not a part of the Separatist. Um, and for those of you who don't, who aren't following, is the day that the Patronaki Aces went down by eight points for no apparent reason. <laughs> well, something else that happened in July uh, that we did jump over here was the Campaign Against Cancer, the online um, charity drive that we did spear, uh, not spearhead, but we were a part of of that. We were the, the streaming source for that. Um, normally, the Campaign Against Cancer is an in-person X-Wing event that happens in a bunch of different locations around the world and together with all of the people who put in the work at the Campaign Against Cancer and with us and all the donations, they raised up, they raised more than $40,000 which was absolutely an amazing, uh, amazing feat by, by us in the X-Wing community. It was split between um, St. Jude's and another organization out of Australia specifically that I'm forgetting the name. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was really, really great thing to be a part of. It was a 24 hour live stream. Uh, I know Ryan played during, during that event, which was really, really cool. Like the last matchup, the infamous echo escape where everyone bid wrong and their points were gone. <laughs> that was my last in-person match ever. It was versus uh, when you played against Kayla, right? Yeah, me and Kayla. That was mm -hmm. the last time we uh, that I played on a physical table. 
Yeah, so that was uh, that was an absolutely amazing, amazing day. And, you know, I was <laughs> – I, I every year I've – played at the campaign against cancer in person i've told chad i was like i don't understand why you don't stream this i'm sure you could get more donations and i think you know once we get back to in-person play i'm pretty sure we'll be able to to open that up again uh to to streaming hopefully that'd be great but if you remember we couldn't play because the campaign against cancer is officially affiliated with uh, uh with Lucasfilm, no tabletop simulator was allowed for that. So that if you if you remember back seeing, you know, just not TTS X Wing, that was that day, uh, which was which was great. <laughs> All right, and then we get into August. Take it, Ryan. So in August we have the final part of the Galaxy's event, the Corellia. The event. first, the first, the first qualifier. Oh, I was thinking Coruscant. All right, sorry. No worries. We have the first because I saw a qualifier and I was like, wait, what? And this is where Bohan decided to premiere the fearsome Nan Texans, and then everyone was concerned. I was less concerned. I was probably wrong because uh, they kept going. Uh, FFG August 24th officially cancels events for, I believe, the remaining year. Yeah. They yeah. technically they technically uh, canceled store championships and grand championships and postponed the rest. Like system opens were, were pushed back. But, I mean, that's, they were canceled. No, yep. they, we never got the official cancellation for the system open series. But, but yeah, come on. Like... I right. think the only reason why one of them was postponed being or Origins was because Origins ended up being rescheduled as an event or attempted to be rescheduled and then mm -hmm. eventually was canceled. Yep. Exactly. Now, real quick, jumping back to uh, Bohan here on August 22nd with uh, the first uh, Galactic Championship qualifier. His list is now 234 points. I just want to point that out. Okay, the winning list for that one, now 234 points. Then we get into September, Will. Uh, yeah, September, uh, FFG had released uh, X-Wing Solo Rules on the 4th. Uh, their way of um, trying to promote uh, safe X-Wing uh, without suggesting you go online and get you know, <laughs> that pirated bootleg stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, which uh, I I actually really don't know if we ever really as a community got a lot of feedback on that, on the, the flying solo. Have, did you guys ever try it? No. <laughs> no, I, I haven't we played playing, it one time. We were all playing online X Wing, so I had no reason to. Right. I had a couple people ask us to review it, but it was one of those things where, like, I had so little desire to try it because there was, the, was like, why would I play X Wing by myself when I can just tell you to play on TTS? And I mean, yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at. That's where I was at. Uh, interesting. Uh, though, I mean, it's good that they were making efforts. We also appreciated it at the time. Anyways, uh, so that moves on to September 5th, which was the Danthamir Galactic Qualifier, uh, won by Fan Alang again. Uh, him bringing, this is when the bidding wars started. <laughs> like, oh, Bohan was 198 with three Predators. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go two Predators then, undercut that. Uh, so the same... Six Nantex, all crack shot. This one getting a little bit more of a bid with just two Predators. Uh, at the time, uh, or excuse me, now it's 132. Um, that list continues uh, to September 19th for Concord Dawn. Nicholas God takes it now, uh, the standard um, for the meta which was um, only taking one of those two-point EBTs or talent slots. Um, 
Nicholas Gahn preferred predators. Uh, so he went with six predators. Um, ends up being a 222 list, uh, looks like. And of course, uh, then October 5th, or sorry, that was, uh, oh, I scrolled down way too far. October, or uh, September 25th was the HMP, the Psy Shuttle, and the LAT gunship released. Um, they were legal for, um, we we won't start playing with them right away. That's kind of the value of Tabletop Simulator, was that stuff was ready to go. Yeah, it was timed perfectly, because what I said at the start was, if the ships were released at least a week before an event, they would be good mm -hmm. to go, because there would be at least a week for our judges to get questions in, and... It worked out. It worked out. So, yeah, HMP, Psy, and Lat get released. Then we can jump into October. We had the Crate Qualifier, which was the biggest online event out of all of them. It sold out, uh, which was really, really amazing. And uh, a lot of people were excited about it because the HMP, Psy, and Lat were being released. So that there was maximum hype around that one. But Fawn comes in and spoils all the fun. I'm just kidding. Love you, Fawn. But he, he came for the W. And uh, he brought that Petronaki Arena A squad and was able to come out the champion. Yes, I had to ship that man too. You heard me two qualifier championship plaques. All right, that was a heavy box. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and uh, that list again, he took he took one that was even a little bit deeper bid, and this one is at two hundred and twenty. Oh no, sorry, he went he took two hundred twenty eight points of now, uh, with all of them having the crack shot. He really valued the crack shot. October 5th, a really exciting thing happened in GSP history. We had the Twitch partnership was attained by us, which was amazing. Something that we've been working towards for a really long time. And thank you to all of you guys who have been a part of it there on October 5th. October 17th, the Ryloth Galactic Championship qualifier. Timo, Lars, Rabe, yes, we're saying it again, winning with Boba Dengar. Uh, is that the exact same list as well? Yes, it is, right? Marksmanship, contraband, yeah. Uh, no, composure was the difference, uh, different thing there on Boba Fett. And I remember yeah, team Boba Fett went up just a little bit in points between yeah, those two. And uh, I remember Timo saying something like, uh, he brought the composer so he could be more risky with boosting. He'll give himself a chance, but it didn't trigger all that often. So um, that's that's that. October 24th, Mustafar, our one uh, hyperspace event out of here, which Ryan was pumped about, but I believe sad at the same time because I dropped it, of course, on the release date of Squadrons. Sad face. If I remember, was, was that how that happened, Ryan? That, that was great. That was great. Ah, okay. So great was Squadron's release weekend, and I think October 24th was like the Carolina Crate's first organized Squadron's weekend. Mm -hmm. So basically still Squadron's related. Right. And uh, Ben Doyle wins that one with Boba Fett. Where? And Fenral there. That list currently now at, at 174 points. Had a pretty healthy bid going into it. But again, uh, Maul was on that list. No longer legal. Then October 29th, a very, I think, one of the most interesting days of the year, guys. Okay? Hashtag we are data. All right? There's an emergency points update. Okay, from all this data that's been collected by FFG, the points changed, uh, and the points went up, up, up on all of the Nantex fighters, which was hilarious. And, uh, you know, you can get your We Are Data TV, uh, We Are Data t-shirt on GoldSquadronPodcast.com, always be plugging. But, uh, yeah, the bugs went up there. And just in time for the release of the Heralds of Hope and Ty Brute that happened on October 30th. And then we got to November 7th. Marcel, what was November 7th? Uh, November 7th is uh, – oh, that was a Coruscant. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention. Um. Um, 
So yeah, so that was Coruscant. The, how many people did you actually have play? Because I know you did like um, you did all the qualifiers. And... Uh, it was one hundred and fifty ish, because you had okay. to be invited to it. Yeah, it was all the qualifiers and yeah. stuff leading up to it. Uh, yeah, and that uh, well, do we call it? No, November seventh was Coruscant Invitational. The Galactic November Championship 8th, Finals. Yeah. Yeah, November eighth was the. Um, the resurgence, not resurgence. That was like the first. That was the premiere. That was the coming out party for the Thai aggressors. Is what it was. <laughs> it was a uh, Charlie Clody from South Africa. South Africa. Yep. Yeah, South Africa flying the Admiral Sloan with the Thai aggressors dorsal turret, um, which I think at their per- current point cost is going to be. Really funny to say that the Thai aggressors win, or that I mean, we know Admiral Sloan won, but are the Thai aggressors good be- without it? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so anyway, it was a culmination of a a tremendous end game level. Like you know, you get the whole Marvel, you got the Iron Man, uh, <laughs> Mustafar, you got the Hulk. Actually, Hulk movies were bad, so no Hulk. Um. Anyway, you got all the other, all, all the other movies leading up to this culmination, and the uh, Tigressers kind of spoil it for everyone. Um. So, congratulations. And then, in November sixteenth, you got the AMG is announced. Uh, we're getting pretty close to now, actually. So we get X Wing to move to AMG. I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything about this particular one because this, this was kind of a doozy. Yeah, I mean, let's 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 unpack this one. Let's unpack this one just a little bit because it triggered a lot of emotions in the community, right? Because it put up in the air what's going to happen to our game, and the like. I had said earlier. And I was I was talking to to someone recently. Uh, I did a, like a phone interview, and they were asking me about Gold Squadron, and <laughs> they were just I was trying to explain X Wing to somebody, and what I ended up saying, and we've said this many times, is X Wing for a lot of people becomes. A lifestyle. It's a like it, it is one of those games that can quickly becomes just like a part of your life. It's not like checkers. It's not uh, you know. It's not just something you, you you bust out on a table. It does take a little bit of commitment to really be a part. Of the community and really buy in to you know the list building and the excitement around it, and it, it I think it, it is one of the things that has really helped develop the community is that there is a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive vibes on on how the community really surrounds itself with positivity and growth. And when we saw this, um, when we saw this switch from FFG to AMG, we all got real uncomfortable real fast. And while there has been some questions answered, if you go back to that episode, it's now – I think it probably was 180 – how many weeks back was this now? You know, six episodes ago, you know, but 80, 180, 181. Um, we – we we still don't know as much as we would like to about AMG and what they're going to do. And uh, I mean, I I'm I got feeling, a bone to pick with I, AMG. All right, go 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 for it. It's not related, but I got a bone to pick. Um, so it's not Filippo, related, but I'm going to say this anyway. Go for it. So uh, you, you know Filippo, right? He was uh, the I think was he the marshal or he was one of the be- no he no Jers was the marshal, but he was one of the judges at uh, Worlds and uh, Big European. Anyway, you guys you guys know Filippo. You yeah. guys know Filippo. Uh, he gifted me very kindly the Marvel Crisis Protocol uh, <laughs> corset. Uh huh. And Kayla and I were super excited to get painting, so we took out all of our painting material and we're like all right let's go paint so we opened the box and we are now waiting to get glue 
uh, we I bought a knife set so I can cut like the little edges off the little things so I can glue them together. Anyway, it's it's it feels like I'm it's a model kit, like little tiny pieces like this big. My hands busted. I can't build that stuff. Um, so had I known that now, I probably would have been more critical of the move. Than I am. Not, than I, I mean, was we, he, that. here's the funny part, I, Marcel, is that we uh, talked about the fact that they do models that you have to assemble. I thought assemble meant like, like click, like <laughs> Lego, you know, like, like, I thought you had to click them. Marcel hasn't like gone into like any of the traditional big modeling based games, Warhammer, Warhammer 40K, anything that actually requires glue, assembly, trimming, painting finishing so i did that with classic cars like i i have a lot of collector cars and i've like built classic cars i used to be in the marine corps i i did like a whole big ch46 ones that took like all the little intricate pieces but that's not what i signed up for i want to play uh I, want, I wanted to play a game i, I didn't want to like make a project so um Anyway, that, that was my bone to pick, but I know that they came out with a statement saying they're not going to go that route. So right, they I'll look at X Wing as a different type of game. Basically, they look at X Wing as a different type of game, and they're 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 not going to do it to us. And you know, I, 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 from a business standpoint, I'm not like, I'm not surprised that they had to bring up that statement, but I wonder, I, I. I a lot of people play X-Wing as a models game because you don't have to do anything. Like, it just looks good out of the box. But let's say for some crazy reason, so many people were like, oh, man, it'll be great to assemble these X-Wings and, and put together these ships. I I would not be surprised if they would turn around and, and say something like, oh, yeah, we're going to make it so that you have to assemble. I think they got a feel. They, got, they, they took the temperature of the community accidentally. And found out real quick. We are most of us are not interested whatsoever in assembling the ships. So I'm glad that they came <laughs> came up with the statement saying that that's not going to happen. Now, um, Striatic in the chat says that they'd like to see more about X Wing specifically, and. From what I've seen, now I've put in several requests to get interviews, and according to um, our good friend uh, Jeff Sanders, who's been in the, in the chat, I'm not sure if he's in there right now, uh, he had mentioned that during one of the Marvel Crisis Protocol streams that they put on, that they are going to actually be responding and taking interview requests in the new year. So hopefully we will be able to get them on uh if not for a podcast formerly for a monday night uh be able to at least do a one on one and then i i'd of course get you guys the the video and audio for that so that we can so we can talk to them and see see where their where their mind and thoughts and heart is with X-Wing because it's an important game to us and I'm sure people who play Legion and and uh, and any other uh, of the Armada as well people who play those games are feeling the same way we are feeling about X-Wing I know we feel a little entitled cuz we're like well X-Wing is bigger than all those and I get it <laughs> uh but they I'm sure they'll address those things soon soon is uh is where we're at um, and then we had November 24th. We got the updated X-Wing app, which we did a bunch of videos about that and points adjustment. I believe it was me and Ryan just going through the app at the time and, and just trying to figure out, suss out what, what were some of the changes. We discovered that the app is still bad, um, <laughs> but some, uh, some big changes. What, are, what were some of the highlights for the points changes, guys? Something that you remember off the top of your head here. These are our current points changes that we're living with now. Nantex. I mean, they they had gone up already, right? Because of emergency I mean, stuff. Oh yeah, that yeah. was the emergency. So this is after the emergency. Yeah. Yeah, we had repeated it uh, multiple times throughout the year. We had to make a note about Boba Fett losing Maul. Uh, I believe had been the biggest uh, factor, and. You know the competitive scene, uh, well, losing out on that point. I, I really haven't heard of how Boba Fett's bouncing back from it yet. Yeah, that's probably the biggest one. Um, kind of one that went under the radar 
was I think the base generic Kashyyyk Defender Ozatux went up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the list that um, arguably, and Diona's mentioned multiple times, if it weren't for the Nantex, may have been one of the biggest new things to hit the meta with the AP5 or Sabine with four Kashyyyk Defenders. Yep, that uh, that went up in points there. Then I think even more consequential than the points going up and some slots changing around, which I think were important, is absolutely massive changes in hyperspace. FFG went and said, all right, you, get, you said you wanted something really different. Here you go. And they completely chopped up factions. I think it's really exciting. Um, so much so that a big chunk, more than half of the events for the uh, Gold Squadron Flight Club Championship Series are hyperspace because, are simply because of how interesting I find the changes they made. And I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what they've done. So that happened there. November 24th, and then we're, we're basically just a couple weeks ago. We had uh, November 27th, the V-Wing, the Ada 2, Django's Fire Spray, Tri-Fighter get released. November 28th, like the day after, uh, the, the my, my crazy fam in Lima said, ah, we'll put on an event and we'll let the stuff be legal the next day. It worked out, luckily. A lot of questions about Zam the entire thing, but <laughs> that's all right. And... Um, Marcelo Dantas ends up winning that with Empire List, Grand Inquisitor, Darth Vader, Fire Control System on Vader, um, and Afterburners, and then a bunch, bunch of stuff on Echo here, Collision Detector, Fifth Brother, Targeting Computer. I played that a couple times, uh, and that is still, obviously because it's after the points change, it's still currently legal. And then December 20, uh, sorry, December 12th, we had the unofficial Polish Nationals, uh, won by Starvlad. The only Rebel win this year in a major event, yet Janors, Wolfwaro, Jake, Farrell, and Dutch in that list. Um, you know, overall, looking at this, if we're just talking about, like, the faction of the year, um, w is it Empire or is it Separatist? It's, you have to probably separatist. say it's Separatist, right? Yeah, Separatist. Because even before... No, it's got to be Separatist. Before the, um, you know, before the lockdown, before everything, you had Duncan winning with it. And then during all the Space Jam stuff, it, it, it crept up during the... I, I see Ryan counting fingers. But um, it's got to be Separatist. Like, the Separatist, even, even last year, when Separatists weren't winning everything, we were always telling people here, like, the the cut percentage, the, the amount of people that bring Separatists and the amount of people that make cuts is high. So I think Separatists, from the moment that they got announced, have been, this has been, they've been the most likely scenario for you to win since they came out. It's not that drastic of a difference. I'm counting only I'm counting six of these events won by separatists, five Empire. Not saying that it shouldn't be separatists, I'm just saying it's not as drastically uh noticeable because while the top dogs have been separatists one more event than Imperial, I my guess well, this would be I guess outside now the Nantex kind of still weigh that a lot. I was going to say Imperials probably have still a strong showing in the top cuts, but then so do Separatists via the yeah. Nantes. I'll, I'll challenge you by saying that the percentage of players, like if you take the overall per percentage that was Separatists versus the overall percentage that was Empire, a higher percentage of those Separatists made cuts consistently. And that's been the case since the Separatists was announced. So Separatists yeah. has always been one of those factions where you fly, if you fly them mediocre to good, you're probably going to make a cut. It's just a lot of people don't fly them. And, and, and it's a fact. The reason I'm saying that is because even as high as like 50% of the Separatists, since last year we've seen that. So like half of the Separatists that enter a tournament make the cut. And I mean, and just, just to kind of give some perspective maybe to people not thinking about the full, like when Marcel says half, 
there might be like 10 out of, a, out, of out of like 150 people, so half would be five, right? Yeah, exactly. Kind of exactly. The percentage of the people that play the faction, not a mm-hmm. percentage of the people that participate in the tournament. Right. Um, so the faction has always been the highest percentage of representation based on what they, well, you know, what percentage of the whole they were. Right. So if, if 10 of them show up, five of them make the cut. It's always been oh, that way. Yeah. They, they, so separatists have separatists as a faction since, I think since after the hyena came out, because before then there wasn't really great representation. A lot of people still figuring things out after the hyena came out. Gen Con that year and on is when we started to see the separatists leading up to worlds um, have that strong cut conversion, cut rates across the board. Not a lot of people bring them, but the people who do bring them have them have them practiced, nailed down, figured out. They've played against other matchups. And the big key, not a lot of people have played against them because there's not a lot of players. People don't have the experience of knowing the triggers and what is necessary to beat a separatist list. So most separatist players do have a higher percentage chance of making the cut. I do think it's not, besides the Nantex, I don't think it's a a mediocre to good player could just take separatists in a cut most of the time. I think it's the quality of separatist players in the beginning and sometimes trailing onto this point have generally been people who have devoted their time into it. Once the Nantex were a big deal, a lot of people jumped across because that was the list. Uh, whether separatist or not, people were jumping to it, and that definitely had an elevated floor. No joke. True. But but I would say I, I would counter with just as many people practice the empire list practice the you know all the other non separatist lists they put a lot of time and effort into this and they don't make the cut as consistently as separatists did so that's why i was saying like as a faction as a whole just with the tools that are provided to you by you know the the points and all the ships you have eight ships that they're sharing tokens and they're they're doing things they're keeping tokens with with um, some of their things, they're throwing out the Discord missiles. Like, they have a lot of tools. With all of the tools, with just the sheer number of ships that they bring to the table that can pass tokens around and pass abilities around, uh, landing on rocks and so forth, the Separatists have been the faction with the high. They've been the, the faction with the highest conversion rate because they've been the faction with the most tools that are across the board winning. I think the only couple, if you're just looking at tool at, at factions or things that have those tools that are, that kind of cancel everything out. The only ones that I can think of that are consistent are a little bit with the empire, um, Asus, uh, Boba Fett for sure. Uh, Boba Fett plus whatever. And then the A wings, even though I think less people fly the A wings just because they t- tend to get a little boring. A uh, little, re- you know, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. But I think those are the three that tend to be consistent. But the separatist faction as a whole, that's like the whole faction is consistent. Yeah. And we've seen it reflected in some of the points updates that if you want to bring toys to any significant amount of separatist lists, you're only bringing seven ships now. It's not eight anymore. Seven still obviously very effective, uh, as we've seen too. Now, one thing, if you, if anybody remembers our 2019 year in review, um, I had mentioned that. So over the last year and a half, separatists were dominant. Like they, they really have been on top for a long time. So uh, for them to start waning a little bit is not a surprise. You know, some, something else has got to step up. There's been a lot of lists that have come close. Uh, but overall, we've had, um, you know, that, that rise 
in the separatist action. By the way, anybody who's watching live, I did just add a command. If you want to get to this timeline at any time, exclamation point timeline will bring up uh, this document. That, that is just something that we're going to keep running uh, over the years. The 2019 events are in there as well if you want to take a look at what happened back in 2019. Now, you know, we've read the, the winners. We talked a little bit about meta development. We talked a little bit about the rise of TTS, right? A lot of people have jumped into playing online. Now, what I want to hit is this is a little bit of speculation time, okay? A little bit of speculation time. And if true or false, here's, let, let, me, let me restate my question here. True or false, one thing that has been widely stated is that because – more people in the community have been accessing online X-Wing that we discovered the Nantext, the, the meta developed people predicted faster than it would have with in-person events. Do you think that's true or false? Chat, what do you think? Ryan, I'll pass it to you. Um... You might want to say, again, I was kind of paying attention to the chat and their separatist stuff that they're talking about, so I had to take a look at that real quick. Uh, no, no worries. No worries. So the, the question, uh, again, I'll, I'll restate it, is one thing that a lot of people have been saying is that the Nantex meta developed very quickly – because of online play, is that more people were accessing online play, thus the meta developed faster. Do we actually – do you believe that? Or would do you think that we would have identified the Nantex as a community right away? So in, I if we were agree, in person? I agree the general audience and widespread players adopted what was thought to be the top tier list faster. One – because you don't have to buy all of them. You're just online play. It just, boop, digital. I have ships. Um, and then also because more intermixing of the player base, more people got to play each other at that competitive level with the Nantex. But I'll go back to something that a um, really good player by the name of Duncan Howard mentioned to me. And that is this quick adaptation and what you could say the led down the path of the dark side going the quick and easy path didn't do well to breed creativity in how to solve the problems of the meta people just adopted it interesting interesting will your thoughts it definitely speeds it up uh, i think people are getting in more games now than ever uh, and the <laughs> uh, just giggling about uh, dice stats, but games uh, are more quantified. No, no, no. that's a, not. <laughs> anyways, uh, my, my my brain drew a correlation, but they're uh, quantified. They're um, there's more of them posted in tabletop uh, to um, where we can see the results. We can see these tournaments uh, happening uh, in almost real time. And that uh, source of information is tra traveling now instantly uh, that you can see uh, someone just win a game in a tournament and be like, wow, that's a really good list. I'm going to try that list out. Uh, and you can go right online, play it like within minutes and then go and then be like, wow, I really like this list. And you can send it to like three or four people, you know, within the hour. So, like, news is, travels so much faster now than I think it ever did on the tabletop simply because we're, everyone's so much more involved with communicating digitally as well. So, uh, I think it definitely has, I don't know if it's, if it's, like, made it better or worse, but um, as far as, like, you know, negative player experiences and things like that, finding the... Um, the most broken things possible. But I do think that because we've got so used to communicating digitally, that information has gone up so much faster. All right. Um, and before I get to Marcel here, I want to shift the question just a little bit. I want to shift the question just a little bit. So 
we're saying that we think, you know, we may have gotten to the same result. Ryan saying that maybe creativity may have been reduced because of of not having to own the ships and, and those creative solutions not necessarily needing to be solved right away. But do we think that the uh, – how do I want to say this? Do we think – how do man? So I'm sorry if I'm, I'm struggling to get this out, but I'm trying to connect all these thoughts. So we were pre COVID, pre online events. I was traveling all around the world bringing these major events where hundreds of people were playing and people were able to see that pretty almost as often as we were, we were streaming these big events online. Um, beforehand, so the exposure was still there. Do we think that as a community, with people being able to get more games faster, which I 100% agree with that, Will, do we think that the player level has gone up? Do we think the average player in X-Wing is a better player than they were pre-COVID? I'm going to say yes and no. Yes, online. No, in person. Because I think I, I I do believe that there is there is a distinction between playing online and playing in person. And getting used to playing online, especially with um, you know the number of rounds that it takes to play, just the visualization of like how you know am I going to make this turn? Am I not going to make this turn? Looking at the angles, whether you play Vassal or. Um, uh, tabletop simulator and uh also you know the pace the just standing up for an hour and keeping the it takes a different level of endurance to play through a game where when you're sitting at home in your pajamas and you know you take your in in a in a real tournament you have to strategize even going to the bathroom. Like, okay, I know I have to go to the bathroom. All right, how long can I hold it? Can I hold it? <laughs> like, that's a thing. And over here, it was like, hey, let's pause the timer for a minute. Let me, let me go to the restroom and come back. Like, everything is is uh, different. Uh, the, the measurements are different. Uh, the bumping and just the cleanliness of being able to do the wiggle room and, and, and things like that. So uh, I, w I would say that online play is a lot more condensed as far as like the the level of place is more bunched towards the middle but when we start playing in person again i think that you're going to get a, a a a bigger like the people that have been playing better may not con, may may not play as well off the table and the people that were not playing as well that used to play better may 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 break that separation again. I would say um, Ollie's a good example. Oliver Pockno, mm -hmm. like the, the guy's an amazing player. Like I, I, I mean, he's the world champion. He won hyperspace trials. Like he he's done a lot. His game has not his success in person has not carried over to his success in online play as much. And he's he said so as much himself. Um, so a lot of that I think has to do again with the pace of play, with having that natural advantage of just staying composed, being able to stay on your feet eight, 10 hours a day. Uh, and especially when, once you make the cut, like, um, like, uh, you know, I think most of us here on, on this cast, like we, we know what it's like to do it twelve hour tournament and then do five or six hours the following day. Yep. It's not easy. Like the mental fatigue in that is not nearly the same as the mental fatigue that you get, you know, playing in your in your study, in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you're playing, and then doing it again. Right. It's so well, I mean, uh, I get, I get that was a long winded line. answer. It's a long winded yeah. answer, but I, I don't I think yes. In while you're playing online you more more people are are clunched together a little bit more 
but that may not translate to them to yeah i think once you get in person you're going to see uh, a, a a bigger separation again brian and will you guys want to throw your hat in the ring on uh on this idea no okay just check it i mean <laughs> I, I do think that the players who are playing online are dedicated enough and are getting in enough games right now that I do think that they're above the curve. Uh, so um, I just pretty much agree with myself that um, without having in play um, strong competitive, you know, gatherings, um, I think we're all just worse in person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there. And, the, uh, go ahead. You have. People who have to get used to instead of clicking a button to put a token out or just clicking a thing to flip a dial, click a button and the ship moves for you. You got to move the ship. You got to, you and your opponent got to solve that bump shenanigans and that scrum. So, uh, all this stuff, man. Whole, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> there, there's a whole lot of, uh, time potentially lost without the automatic stuff like that available, uh, from the online. There's give and take both ways. Stuff you lose time in, stuff you gain time in, all that. Other, right. Uh, automatic online stuff set up for you. So, uh, and and the, anyone who's very familiar with formation flying in any capacity, when you formation fly in person, they don't always stay straight. Even though you did two straight turns of one or two straights, they start to maybe shift a little bit because there's human error and physically placing it on the board and everything like that. So knowing when that's happened, because your ships were just off a little bit, how to adjust correctly. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. It's I, I I will I will state it again. I am simultaneously extremely excited for in person play because I would love to see the people I'm playing for again. But at the same time I know I'm gonna have to put like a mega trigger warning on all of the streams because ships are gonna get bumped. It if you haven't watched an in person game in a while, go back and watch some of our old streams of, of stuff in person and you will see the imperfections. That happened, though. Some pe it's it's int it does create it feels like a different game. I will tell you, like the the obviously the mechanics are different, but the flow of the game is very different. So I think that's something that we're gonna have to have to get used to. Um, and like I, I think we could sit here and reminisce for a really long time on on some of the things that we wish wouldn't have happened. I, and I'm gonna state the obvious. Obviously, none of us wanted. <laughs> 2020 to roll out the way it did we would have loved for um you know in-person play to have continued and uh obviously all the other negative effects of COVID-19 absolutely suck um and we've been just doing our best as the X-Wing community to try to make the best out of what we have right now and I I want to stress two things before we jump off this topic and we hit our list of the week um I want to I want to stress that um, you know to continue being patient, and I know that especially if you were if you struggle with playing on the computer, which there are still people who have been hesitant to jump into TTS and they're starting to feel disconnected from X Wing because they're not playing. Uh, really, the best way to get connected again is to play. Like that is the best thing. Um, I'm actually uh, I have on one of my tabs right now a uh, a tutorial that I that I'm re-recording, basically going through um, the uh, the master classes that I was doing for people, and then just kind of like going through them by myself, so people can have those uh, with the most current version of TTS, and and just trying to make TTS as accessible for people as possible. Um, yeah, just. It, Keep playing. That's what's going to keep you plugged in. Keep keep talking about X-Wing. That's what's going to keep it alive. Um, because I do think while our game has grown in in certain ways, I think as, as a whole, we likely, and I think this is probably with most communities where the the activity is in person, there's less people active in the community than there were before now we might have more people you might see more people than usual online but that does not 
give you a whole representation of everybody that would have part- been participating in uh, in-person tournaments and the people that you potentially could have pulled in. And um, I, I obviously wish that our growth could have continued and... I will tell you, every X-Wing comment, uh, content creator out there can look at numbers because I've looked at other people's numbers too, and everybody's taking a little bit of a dip. Even though we've had some great successes, like there, there's the reality is that there's enough, there's a noticeable amount of people who've stepped away from the game. Uh, we have gained some, but uh, hopefully, when we do get back in person, we get that. That's our, you know, our. Um, you know, a shot in the arm to really get get us going and and continue on the rise again, uh, because we're still we still love X Wing. We're still really excited about it and excited to see where things are going. And speaking of people who are excited about X Wing, let's jump in the list of the week. We got the rookie Wookie who sent us a list. Uh, I think Will's gonna take this. Real Will, what are we starting with? All right, so uh, the prompt here from rookie Wookie. Because I really wanted to try out some Afterburners fangs. They recently got a mod slot. Super fun round. Not allowed. Uh, and tried to use the pilots you don't normally see in the fangs. Uh, so this is what brought them to Joy and Cad. Uh, Joy uh, Redkoff, also a big um, winner of the latest points update. Down five points. Um, anyway, so uh, they were trying to mix in these Joy and Cad um with a bosk and they have oh let me get pulled up here so joy of course is the fang fighter who says while you perform an attack you may spend one charge from an equipped torpedo upgrade if you do the defender rolls one fewer defense dice so uh, obviously you're rocking ion torpedoes with that the cheapest uh, torpedo with two charges there, I think it's just the cheapest munition right now, isn't it? Yep, at four points. So, uh, we got Afterburners, as said in the prompt. We got Elusive for Cad. I'll read Cad Solace's ability, too, here. Because uh, I don't normally see a lot of play. It says, after you fully execute a red maneuver, which is the two talons and 4k, uh, you gain two focus tokens. So, combining that with Elusive, which gives you uh, a charge that comes back when you... Uh, do red maneuvers, mix and joy right off with fearless when you couldn't even shoot the iron torpedo. Uh, do you utilize those abilities and has Bosk coming in with Zam Wessel BT1 Hull Upgrade False Transponder Codes and the X23 Thread Tracers. So now uh, we got to keep these fangs. Which, um, I don't mind, actually. I think these are built right. The Elusive makes sense. The Fearless makes sense. Uh, a little expensive, but they got all the goods. So, uh, what can you complain about? Um, but, I like the idea of the Tracer Missile. I've real, been a real big fan of Tracer Missiles lately. I've been trying to sneak them in to literally every list I'm, fly- I'm flying. Uh, so, we're going to keep the Thread Tracers, but we're going to put them in a much more useful platform uh not getting a lot out of them on the zam bosk so we're gonna sh- we're gonna shrink that bosk down into z95 bosk keeps the same initiative four which is the same as the fang fighters um we're gonna keep the thread tracers and the false trans undercodes um so you can shoot to get locks for everybody and the false trans codes even jams that person you shot the thread tracers at such a cool combo. Let me see if Dion's keeping up because I'm talking fast. Uh, 53 left? I got 47 left. What are you missing here? Oh, because I'm flying Bosk in the Z95. Because we, be, we need to be initiative four to shoot uh, the tracers before Joy or Cad. Maybe Joy could actually get off that uh, ion torpedo. Um, I think could come in for uh, a close range attack. 
So 47 points. I've looked at, uh, you just hit copy on one of the Fang Fighters. Uh, gives you an afterburner zealous recruit if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, like a low initiative blocker out there. Uh, you could trade the, the afterburners in for just being a skull squadron. So everybody's the same initiative there. Everyone's all four, got all the fangs and things like that. But what this is missing, though, is once you start dipping into that kind of uh, triple ace and support, uh, you got nobody to soak your shots anymore. And that's what Bosco, I think, was really uh, geared to do. So we're going to switch out for Nom Lom. 38-point jump master. He's got nine points. So let's go with uh, auto blaster. So he's got a front arc there. Uh, Zam, because he's or there. Uh, my new favorite upgrade for a scum. And you got two points left over. So uh, you could either... Greedo seems risky. Uh, so I'm just going to grab BT1 on there. So that uh, I can maybe get some automatic crits on the auto blaster. If someone's trying to say run away from you um, for it. Just to get some triggers in there. Maybe people who are stressed will think twice about potentially ask, activating your double shot. So, uh, that ends up being uh, Joy and Cad are the same fearless uh, ion torpedoes, afterburners, and elusive on um, afterburners on Cad. Bosk with thread tracers, uh, Bosk in the Z95, with thread tracers and false transponder codes. And then, rounding out the list is Nam Lam and the Jump Master. With Auto Blaster, Zam Wessel, and BT1. All right, our next list, we're going over to Darth Unlucky. Marcel's going to be taking care of with this one, and it is a uh, scum list. Sorry, not a scum list, a rebel list. Sorry, I saw Lando, and my brain said scum. Yeah, and that comes from Darth Unlucky. He says, this is a list I have been experimenting with. I feel like it has potential to do well, but could maybe use a few tweaks. The list seems too reliant on Luke. Anytime I have lost Tim, I lost the match. What changes could you make to make it a better list? Thanks for any help. And it is a hyperspace list with Lando Carlissian, Cal Carlissian, uh, Nyan Nam. Then you have Thane Carell with Dead Eye Shot. Uh, so you can potentially get like a double crit in there with Thane's ability and then Luke Skywalker with heightened perception which lets him shoot an initiative 7 and advanced proton torpedo coming in at 200 points so um, what am I going to do here so let's actually just start off in order to make it good I, it seems like the main thing that he's trying to do here when I looked at it is he's just trying to get double mods with Thane double mods with Luke because of the target lock force and then Lando Basically, getting a single mod or double mod for Lando depends on who has to be at a better shot. So, double actions. So, let's get rid of Lando. There's more productive ways to, more efficient ways to get double actions. I think the most obvious one is Jake Farrell. So, let's throw Jake in there. And uh, actually, let's get rid of that eye shot. We don't need two dead eye shots in there. So we got Jake Farrell. And then the other way to get good double mods is uh, Dutch Vander the Y-Wing. So let's get the Dutch in there as well. And on Dutch, let's give him the Ion Turret because the Ion Turret is really good, especially if um, you've got advanced proton torpedoes, you're trying to line them up. There's no better way to line it up if you know where they're going to be even before you set your dial. So that leaves you with how many points out of there? Um, leaves you with five points, 195. Five points. Okay, so let us put um, something is not matching. Oh, take the height and take the... So oh, this is going to be a choice, okay? So for starters, let's put... Um, so you can have it like this and just the, add an advanced proton torpedo on... Um, Thane. 
Uh, so basically what you're trying to do with Luke, have that really hard-hitting initiative one, I mean initiative five, five dice attack uh, with double modded. You can get that with uh, Thane as well. He can have Dutch throw him a target lock and then he takes a focus, or he can get a focus from Jake and then take a target lock himself at, a, at initiative five. And that's the way I would leave it. The only thing I would probably um, go back and forth with is the heightened perception on Luke. That's kind of just leave it to your own flavor. Either leave it with heightened perception on Luke if you really want to kill something, if you feel like you can get that that kill at initiative seven, um, leave it on there. If you're not as confident or you don't see as much value, I would probably then move those three points over to Dutch uh, in the form of thermal detonators or sas. Probably thermal detonators more, but thermal or seismic charges. So kind of pick your flavor. Um, actually, I'll, I'll ask you guys, like, what would you take? Would you take in, the heightened or the thermals? Well, in hyperspace, in this particular you, uh, list, in hyperspace, hyperspace, you can't take the seismic, so it has to be thermal just for just okay, for Okay, the note thermals there. or the um, or the height. I don't, I don't like heightened perception to go from five to six or five to seven. Not that much. Agreed. I think it's too much of a situational card. Uh, while it has done some really cool things in certain lists, I think this is a mm -hmm. case where the the flexibility on the bombs and the threat that that creates, I think, is has more value. Yeah, and being able to drop two of them at two different ranges behind you, kind yeah. of cover that. Because Dutch will be the easiest ship to kill on this list. So I do agree. That's the way I had it myself. Um, but anyway, so that leaves you with Thane Carell with a an advanced proton torpedo, Luke Skywalker, advanced proton torpedo. Then Jake Farrell is naked, just throwing out focuses. And Dutch Vader, Dutch Vander has an ion cannon and thermal detonators, passing out target locks and dropping bombs. All right. I actually like this list. I think you should try it on Wednesday. I think it's good. It, it looks, yeah, it like looks it. good. It has some tools for sure. All right. Next, we have Dr. Karaoke taking a list here that Ryan is going to take a look at. It is a resistance list. Mr. Resistance himself going to be taking a look at uh, at this list. Go for it, Ryan. So the description, they're trying a list with Poe and Ray and ended with that and wanted our thoughts on it. So we'll start. We got Poe with heroic R4 astromech integrated dust foils and heavy laser cannon. And we have Ray with Finn, Ray's Millennium Falcon, Rose Tico, and Corsella. And then just Meryl Cobbin, our favorite Initiative 1 A Wing, with Intimidation for that nasty minus two agility combination with his ability and Intimidation stacking with each other. Some of the pieces are neat. Uh, Ray is always as powerful. Meryl has really good value right now. Um, Man, oh man, I still don't know about Poe. Uh, he's still just a T-70. He's backed it by Heroic, which is nice for his survivability. Uh, but he still just has R4. I like Heavy Laser Cannon. I, I really like finding a way to get Poe four dice attacks uh, besides just being a range one. But I, I think without some sort of regen droid like the new R2-D2 that I know Marcel likes, and also uh, BB-8 to find some way just to be out of arcs, to not get shot, uh, not a fan of Poe. I think there's other things we can do in the list to maximize uh, Ray and Meryl, and uh, we can get two ships out of one, potentially. So we're going to start just X out Poe completely. That's the first starting. Point. Bye. Oh, sorry, Poe. <laughs> In extended, you have too many other I6s that are too deadly against Poe, and you don't really have much of a bid in this list at this point. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to give Ray and the list in general a little bit of nice support with some efficiency. We're going to slot in Rose Tico with 
C3PO crew for that either double calculate on herself or also that red coordinate and getting her a calculate token at the same time. So are we Very removing good. are we removing Rose from Ray? Then? Oh yes, do that. Okay. <laughs> That's what that was one of the first upgrades I I took off of Ray uh just cuz I Rose Tico crew is nice on Ray, but I think Rose Tico pilot is arguably better right now of an investment granted it's a lot more of an investment. But some, uh, it's a good piece in the list right now for 30 points to have something that can coordinate and still have not only a focus modifier with the soft calculate, but also the re-rolls that Rose Tigo can have. So now it's time to try and fit in something else. Well, I don't want to lose intimidation on Merrill. C-3PO crew on Rose is kind of the, the one of the selling points because one of the more successful lists we saw in the past was coordinating Ray in some capacity that was with Covenel wall. We don't need that when we have C3PO on Rose at this point. So we're going to take Corsella off of Ray. We're going to say, all right, that six points is just a bonus to try and get that. We're going to keep Ray pretty thin. We're going to maintain Finn and Ray's Falcon title. Then we have points for one of the hardest hitters on the resistance squad. We're going to go Jess Pava. Jessica Pava, 51 points, a really good mainstay wingmate next to Rose. Uh, both I3, both move at the same time, and Rose next to Jess can get the benefit of rerolls, and then Jess will get the benefit of Rose next to her as well. You have five points left. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't leave room for Corsella, and not a lot of really good crew really to put back on Ray. If you wanted, you could do hull upgrade on Ray or shield upgrade, but I think it's best to say let's get more out of Jess and give Jess R5 Astromech, one of the cheaper droids that gets her charges to use her ability multiple times in a single round and actually can provide a little bit of regen capability, which when you have four hull and, and three shields, there might be some more value into regening that one hull to get above half since you have more of that available and still have your shot since Jess can still generate her own mods from being range one and being coordinated by Rose. So All our right. final list is Ray with Finn and Ray's Millennium Falcon, Meryl with Intimidation, Rose with C3PO, and Jessica Pava with R5 and Integrated S Foils. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Remember, you can submit your own list of the week submissions on our Discord, exclamation point Discord, if you're watching live, or click the link in the description down below on YouTube. Um, you know, thank you to everybody who listened to today's episode. I know that today's topic was, uh, can be for some people pretty... Uh, it's it's a heavy topic, right? We talked about um, everything that did happen in 2020, but the reality is that it's linked to some pretty serious stuff that happened um, in our world. So, you know, just uh, keep on keeping on. We're going to, uh, you know, uh, we'll be on next week, next Monday, right? Because I, I think New Year's, I'm just looking at my calendar here. Yeah, New Year's is Friday. Yeah, we'll, so we'll be, uh, it'll be it'll be the fourth. My birthday is that Thursday. Woo woo! We'll we'll party on league night for you on Wednesday. <laughs> you gotta let me win. No, I gotta spank you for your birthday, right? <laughs> All right, everybody. But we will be live on Wednesday and Saturday. And by the way, sorry, I know that some people had said, hey, Dion, on the podcast, you said you were going to be live on the Saturday after Christmas, and then you weren't. Uh, I basically decided to take the day for my family uh, and me. We were having just way too much fun and uh, with me and my, my wife and my daughter and, and just ha had to take the day. Had to take the day. It was, you know, the day after Christmas. So uh, sorry, sorry, not sorry, but we'll be live Wednesday and Saturday. Let's uh, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, have fun, and Gold Squadron out.